The Genesis 2 is 60Hz while the Mega Drive 2 is 50Hz. 17% faster, red buttons. Who wins? No one. The red buttons really tip the scales. So why am I even talking about all this? Well, as you'll further see, I'm going to modify my Mega Drive 2 so it can be 60Hz! This, this is a uh, footage of 50Hz Sonic the Hedgehog 1. So you may have noticed that the music is drawn from the slow and he's running and jumping in slow motion. Also, not to mention there are these borders on the top and the bottom of the screen. Hey, that looks really cool! Yeah, I know it's not the best quality footage out there in the world on the internet, but I can't use this thing anymore to capture the footage because the fucking thing just shat itself so I can't use it anymore. Though I do have some old 50Hz footage recorded in Composite if you like. No 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 Composite is Composite shit. Anyway we should just be getting along with the mod, shouldn't we? Let's go. To get into the Mega Drive 2 there are four screws underneath that you just take out with the Phillips head screwdriver, pretty standard stuff. Then when you take the lid off, which is also very easy, there is metal shielding that you need to get off to get to the board and get the board out, you know. And to get the shielding off there are nine screws. Oh no. And the shielding comes off pretty simply. The first thing we're going to do is cut a very tiny trace. For a point of reference, there is leg 52 of the Sega 315 chip, and there is the very, very tiny trace. It's much smaller than on the Mega Drive Model 1, but it's still pretty easy to cut through. This is what the trace looks like after it's been cut. So that little section to the left there is left without a trace. Did I just say that? I can't believe I just said that. I, I've got it written down and everything. Now after having cut that trace, it is now actually stuck in 60Hz mode, but why do we need a switch? Well, some games do actually have a regional lockout, and the Mega CD won't work either, nor will the 32X. What is this? So you will need to switch back to 50Hz to play with those add-ons. So the next thing we're going to do is look for a point called Jumper 3. Now up there is the heatsink, and if you can see rearing towards us, there is Jumper 3, labelled as JP3. We'll be soldering a ground cable to that. Now to help you understand, 5 volts is equal to 60 hertz, and ground is 50 hertz, which is also equal to 0 volts. Now what people usually do is, from Jumper 3, they have a cable running to the middle of a single pole double throw switch. One point will go to 5 volts, and the other point will go to ground. And you can just flick between those two for 50 and 60 hertz. Now what I'm going to do is very slightly different. I'm about to cut down the workload for this mod by about an entire third. Basically just forget all about the wire going to 5 volts, and instead of a single pole double throw switch, use a single pole single throw switch. Because remember, as soon as you cut that trace, your Mega Drive 2 is locked in 60 hertz mode. So all you really need to do is add ground to Jumper 3, and it changes it to 50 hertz. Oh, look what I got in the mail today. I got another one of those SCARTA HDMI converters. This one works, however, it won't accept the really low resolution of the Mega Drive, so that's really quite unfortunate. But it does at least notice that there is sound coming out of the Mega Drive, and that's quite alright, as demonstrated by my really high tech Adventure Time speaker. But then I had a thought maybe this power supply will work with 
the one I thought didn't work. But then I thought, nah, I'm not sure, because the power supply I tried to get it to work with before had the exact same specs. Alas, for some reason, it works! So, here's some proper footage of the Mega Drive in 50Hz. Okay, so this is the kind of switch I said I'd be using. Instead, I went with these 8x8mm push buttons because... Oh, yeah. So anyway, I've already drilled the hole in the case using my dad's awesome power drill. And I must say, the hole I made is so clean, it might as well have been done in the factory. Look at that. Now let's get a better look. It's just so good. That's only my second time using a power drill. Okay, so I wired up and installed it. It works, and it looks really neat. Comparison time! So in 50 hertz, that demonstration took just over 50 seconds. In 60 hertz, the same demonstration took just over 42 seconds. So, now you know the difference, are you going to make the difference? Because it's pretty obvious that 60 hertz is far superior. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and as always, I'll be back in 16 bits. What the fuck is going on?! I like how the, the, the square of you is just like... <laughs>